good afternoon, the Percy Inn. Uh, availability for what night? When I got out of grad school, uh, they said, OK, you know how to write. You have a master's in, in journalism. And I had worked for American Express previously. And after two years with them, the only thing I really knew how to do was write and to travel. And so I became a travel writer. It's on Pine 2 on the website. Well, after 20 years, I always worried that if I get fired, where is somebody to hire you to go and look at wonderful hotels all around the world? It just is not a job that, you know, that many people are familiar with. And so I decided to go with the concept of just opening my own inn. This was the first time that Dale had his own B&B. But the Percy Inn is, I feel, the culmination of years of work. He knew what he wanted, but it took about two or three years to fine-tune things. I sold my house to buy this house, and I purchased um, this with the idea that we'd first do it to apartments and have like a year of transition. And But it took us so long to do the renovation that it was like, oh, wait a minute, we're now a year down the pike, It's and the rooms look so wonderful, I don't want to have somebody in here paying $500 a month when I can have somebody in here paying $500 for three nights. And so we went immediately into the in concept and just opened the doors. Portland, Maine from roughly the 1870s to about 1910 was one of the most active ports in the United States. And the primary sources of revenue were granite, lumber, and ice. Because we're a city that doesn't have all its eggs in one basket, that the economy stays pretty even keel, even if a particular industry has problems. Maine has a, a, a mystique, kind of a cachet, that is a wonderful place to vacation. And also, uh, that's how many people get into the bed and breakfast. We're number five in the country for total numbers of bed and breakfast. And that's in line with, you know, California and uh, Oregon has a number. Portland is blessed with an extraordinary number of historical houses, of wonderful old gardens. The past 10 years, there's been a great revitalization of the city, um, due in part to tourism and the tourism business. It's an extraordinary city. It's got a wonderful historic district, uh, a very active historical society. When Dale bought this building, I think it was originally an apartment building in the 1830s, it was a hard hat area. You'd walk in, take two steps in, and you'd look down and you could see the basement just about. And if you looked up, you could almost see the third floor. It needed everything. We put on, first we put on a new roof, 27 new windows. Every, uh, every wall is new, every ceiling is new. We put in 20 inches of insulation between the floors and the ceiling. So between one bedroom on the second floor and the bedroom on the third floor, 20 inches of insulation so there's no noise between, between rooms. Uh, while we had the walls opened up, we put in all new plumbing, all new electrical, a full life safety sprinkler system. There's 47 sprinkler heads in the house. I wanted to be able to have candles in all the rooms. It was interesting that the first year was just a complete learning process. Dale knew exactly what he wanted. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that he was a travel writer. All the rooms have phones and fax machines, CD players, TVs and VCRs. They all are stocked with uh, wet bars and refrigerators. These all have complimentary soft drinks. We put in a selection of CDs. We have 250 videos as well downstairs. All the guest rooms have an individual style. Uh, this room is done in raised panel walls. We have others that have exposed brick. They're all queen bedded. All the rooms have private baths. Also, we have some rooms that have full kitchens, other rooms that have uh, uh, back decks. All the rates include breakfast and parking. And Dale has restored it wonderfully, but it has all the modern conveniences. Dale at the Percy Inn has done a very good job of reaching that corporate, that business travel market. He, he's recognized that it's a viable market, and what he's done is he's done, you know, basically technology is the key element. So we put in a high-speed wire, and we put all the rooms are wired for phone, fax, and modems. And the high-speed wire probably only cost $100 more to put high-speed wire in versus traditional wire. But it gave us the opportunity, so if in the future there's something we need, somebody needs to send a video across, then we've already got the wiring in here to, to do that. And when we started, 
I wasn't sure if if you're going to make it. So every room in the house is wired independently of the next. So this room has separate utilities from that room, which has separate utilities from that room, and this room, and this room. Every room is separate. So if we didn't make it as an inn after six months, I could condo the entire building because we have enough parking that we could do that. And I could sell each one, and that way I didn't lose my initial investment, and I'd always have a place to live. There is a high turnover in the industry. Uh, there's a high turnover for a couple reasons. One is because you are sharing your home with your guest. And at a certain point, some people decide they don't want to do that anymore. Maybe it wasn't the experience they thought it was going to be, and they say, ah, I'm not going to do that anymore. We offer from uh, 8 to 10 in the morning uh, breakfast. We do breakfast every day. It's uh, offered in a buffet style. We don't serve breakfast, per se, and that, that was one of the smartest things I think that Dale did as an entrepreneur. He knew he did not want to get up every morning and cook breakfast for people. So if people say, we'll say you have eggs, we have five different kinds of fruit, we have sour cream coffee cake, we have pie, we have coffee, tea, juices, we have cold cereal, we have hot cereal, and they'll say, well, I like my eggs fried. And they'll say, I do too, but the only eggs you're going to get are the Percy and are boiled. You know, nobody runs a business like the owner. And if you want it done right, you do it yourself. But you can't do it yourself. You can't always do it yourself. But as, you know, as long as you can direct it, that's just as good. I think my main job at the Percy Inn is assisting Dale any way I can. It's washing, taking phone reservations, um, being informative for the guests, um, doing whatever needs to be done. Phyllis is like my right-hand person. She's everything that I'm not. And she's here when I'm not. And she just is, she just fills in all those spots, everything from making sure that a guest two weeks ago who stuck a spoon inside uh, a toaster and it was still going and she was trying to dig out a, a bagel and Phyllis says, you're gonna get electrocuted. She pulls her arm away and the woman says, this isn't a fork. The Percy Inn specializes in service and you need someone who's going to say yes ma'am and yes sir. We had a guy here who was at the art college, who Dale and I showed how to make a bed about 15 times over a three-week period. And finally, we showed him how to fold the top of the bed. And he said, dude, you're stressing me out. And we just thought, if you can't fold a bed, you know, can you really work here? And the funny thing was he, um, he had uh, an inn in New York State call, as a re call us as a reference. And we told him the dude just stressing me out story. And we said he'd be wonderful as a hostess, but you know, we, we don't think the dude should work for you as a housekeeper. And that first year, Dale and I both were going insane, trying to um, just keep up with the laundry. And you can't imagine how many sheets, how many towels that we use. So the second year, one of the first things we did was buy two washers two washing machines, large washing machines, and two very large dryers. Dale's one of our really active members, wonderful person, has a really good sense of marketing. We don't have a budget for, for advertising. We've never paid for any advertising, not a, not a cent. Um, we, the only thing we've done is, is done the uh, search engine bit. We've aligned ourselves with is a, a city map that offers advertisements around the, the perimeter of the map. Um, and even in that case, we did it as a trade. And we didn't have the, the luxury of bringing in decorators or bringing in designers who could go and provide us with a media plan. Our biggest marketing tool is the website. And that probably sends us 80% of our business. Then the other 20% would come from um, other inns and from the visitor center. I would say probably eight out of 10 find us on the website or are directed to the website after they've come from another inn who might be full or might be too expensive or might not meet their needs and they say well call a Percy Inn and they talk to us and we say oh well it is the Walt Whitman room 
why don't you check it on our website? And they'll punch it up while we're talking on the phone and say, oh, yes, I like that room. I like the colors. I like the, you know, the way the sunlight comes in or whatever. And see what the bedroom looks like, what the living room looks like, and all the little details that they need to know. And ultimately, that's what sells a room because they get the details that they want and nothing is left to chance. A web page can the person again, make the playing field even. It gives us the same advantage as a Hilton or a Hyatt or a Holiday Inn. Everyone is even on, on, uh, on the playing field. And by having the detail in a website that gives them more information and is presented in a flowing way, it was, it was the most important thing we've done. We have something on the 12th and the 13th. Have you been looking at the website? But the visitor center is very good about giving us walk-in business. Somebody who comes into the city doesn't have a place to stay, and they say, well, you know, check the Percy Inn, or check this inn, or check this hotel, and uh, they'll ring us up. Do you have any rooms tonight? Yes, we do. Then uh, 10 minutes later, the person shows up on our door. We have a telephone on the outside on the front door. We give them a code that can punch them in. We have an envelope there that says the Dorothy Parker room, 301. That has uh, a parking pass in it. They can take that letter, put their parking pass in the car, go upstairs, and it's like, it's self, uh, you know, uh, self check-in. We have the Percy Inn Room. Uh, that's called the uh, Percy Shelley, and that is 159, and that's available for both Friday and Saturday. No, I'm afraid if you're doing a Sunday, the only thing we can take... We don't give rooms away. Anybody can give a room away. You know, the skill comes in selling the room. And so so we don't give rooms away. But um, but we do come down on prices at a last-minute rate so that a $159 room, we would rather sell it for $119 or $109 than not sell it at all. I think the Percy Inn has succeeded because Dale's vision had a business plan, it had a focus, it had an organization, and it had someone who knew that 24-7 was going to be the um, call number for him for at least the first two years. Right. And for how many persons? Well, we we're, were very fortunate. We, uh, um, we opened and we were immediately full and we stayed full and it just kept rolling from there. Um, we, never, we never had a period where we had to, to supplement the income to pay for the house. I thought originally that personally I was going to have to um, provide extra seed money to keep the inn going, that I would still have to go and do travel writing and do, and do stories and, and travel to support the inn. But from day one, it paid for itself.